50% of our water customers. Yeah, how many water, better question, how many water customers are there in the district? So I believe as of right now, we have 906. Right. So you need 430, or 454. Yeah, but 906 is the number. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I showed up late, and my question is, um, what all was done pertaining to our sewer calls? Because mine is 108.36. So this is only regarding water rates. The sewer rates will be coming back probably in several months for a discussion. What revenue source is determining why you need to raise it? Uh, last time I heard you guys had a surplus in your revenue. And you said in the next 10 years, we may need more money. So that's why you want to charge more now? So the district does, the district does maintain uh, both restricted and unrestricted reserves to basically have a buffer in case, you know, worst case, we have a major line break and we have to replace something. Uh, if for some reason we have large unforeseen expenses, that's what covers that. But, but to answer your, the other part of your question, you can't, you know, we can't come to the public and say, oh, well, you know, we need a new well, it's gonna cost $5 million and we need that right now. That, that there's no way this community would support that. Uh, that's why, as I mentioned earlier, we have a, a CIP, a, a capital improvement plan. So we say, okay, in 10 years, we need to have this, have enough money to replace a well. So the rates are designed so that in 10 years, you should have saved up enough money to replace that well. So what so are you're getting at three dollars right? increase going to pay for, is what I'm asking. What are, what are you planning and anticipating you're paying for by raising our rates now? From what I understand, historically, we have some of the highest rates in the county. We've had our rates doubled and tripled multiple times. From what I've looked at over the last 20 years, the rates have dramatically increased. Our water quality has decreased. We have arsenic in our water that is not allowed to be in there. We have radioactive waste in our water that's not allowed to be in there. You're talking about PFAs like it's a problem. PFAs are toxic. <laughs> So we have three toxic things in our water. I hate to see what our PFA rating is going to be in a few months. And you want to raise the rates now to pay for something you think is going to be in the future without giving us something that we're paying for in the future. That's so like telling you know me that I got to pay a bill for something that's going to happen 20 years in the future that I don't know is going to happen. So that's that's a good point. We do have things in the water that are that. Nobody wants to have water. The reality is, is that what we have in our water here is the same stuff they have in Paso. It's the same stuff that's in Atascadero. Uh, I look at the Atascadero and Paso reports. We have the highest arsenic. We actually, our arsenic level is not allowed for state law. So you're not even addressing that we have arsenic, a toxic substance that kills all kinds of people by building up in your blood. It doesn't ever go away. So our children are drinking it, everyone's drinking it. Even if you're not drinking it, you're bathing in it every day, you're washing your clothes in it, you're washing everything in arsenic and radioactive water. And you're trying to raise rates without making better water quality. So that's part of what the rates pay for, is for water treatment. So without- but you're not indicating you're gonna help our water quality, you're just increasing the rates. So we're not increasing the rates for no reason. We're increasing the rates to help pay for water treatment. We're increasing the rates to help pay for water main replacement. So are you well, under, you haven't addressed anything in this that tells me I'm gonna make sure you don't have arsenic. I'm gonna make sure you don't have radioactive. I'm gonna make sure your neighbors aren't stealing from your water over a year now. But you wanna increase my rate when I've already indicated that my usage is not normal. But you've taken over a year now to address this and it hasn't been addressed but you want to still increase the rate while still providing us toxic water and giving us no reason why you want to increase the rate. Well, I'd be more than happy to talk to you if you want to come to the office. I don't want to talk, I want to talk here. Tell us well, the reason you why you want to increase the rate. Because if everybody speak that long, then we'll be here after midnight. I have been so speaking for less than three minutes. Please.
please wrap your comments up. Make a final statement, please. That was my statement. What is the reason why you want to increase the rate? It was a caution water. Yeah, this, this is informal. Right? This is not. Yeah, yeah it's why not is this meeting. informal? It's not a meeting. We're getting way off the time right now. But it's not a meeting. It's, 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 it's all based on all a topic. It's all Do you like your children water. drinking arsenic? Which one in our room would you tell someone? This cup of water has arsenic in it. I know it, but I want my child to drink it. I want my child to bathe in it every day. I want my clothes to have it every day. I want the water around my house to have arsenic in the ground. It all builds up. You're not addressing any of that. So this meeting was to talk about how these rates might affect the community, how these rates from one proposal to the other might affect the community. This isn't really to talk about well, why do we need to so increase the rate of improving quality? Got it. Why do we need to treat water? Why do we need to replace things? This is to give a baseline of why rates are there, what we generally pay for, and to provide information between the rate that was proposed and the rate that are proposed under the 218 and the rate that Director Baker proposed. If the community is more in favor of the rate that Director Baker proposed, then that would give the board feedback saying, look, you should look forward or look to starting the process for that. As a community member, I feel that your rate should indicate the quality of the service. We're not getting quality service. None of these people here want any increase. We don't want either one of those. And that's fine. And that's why we're so, here to talk about what the community. Why are we talking about one or the other when it should be talked about? Why are we driven an increase? So, for instance, have you done any cuts to the budget? I know you have a car that's paid for. It. You drive to get free gas. I don't know a lot of uh, facilities in any other county, including Kern County, where the general manager gets a free truck and free gas. You're here. Maybe you could cut that. Maybe that'll help pay for stuff. And board stipend. So just just for relevance, if we were to if we were to number one, all the water that's produced here, all the water that's provided is within state standards, which are very low. So yes, I agree with you that 100 percent we have arsenic in our water. Is it to a point where it's something that should be that is notified or is required to be notified? No. The scientific evidence says there's no safe level of arsenic in the water. Honestly, there's no safe level for a lot of things. But the reality is, is that you can't get rid of everything in the water. There is no way, especially if you this size, would be able to get arsenic very easily. I used to use uh, public aquariums. I worked for aquariums. I was an aquarius for over 20 years. There's lots of ways to get stuff out of the water. It's very cheap, actually. But you're, you're telling me you want to increase the rates and not give us good quality water. That's OK. I get it now. My point is, is though, the money to pay for these things has to come from somewhere. Kelly, yes, isn't the majority of the arsenic coming from primarily one source? So we have three wells, and arsenic comes from all three of them. Oh, one of them is yeah. slightly higher than the other ones, but with regular use, it is low, just like the other two. So in relation to the rates, uh, having been a member of the board uh, for the last rate increase, uh, we were told by staff uh, and legal and the rate study person that, oh, should you know any expenses go down, the biggest leading factor of increase at that point was the legal fees associated with the Steinbeck lawsuit, uh, which have decreased immensely. We were told at that time, well, when the legal fees go down, you guys can always lower rates. Yeah. Well, guess what never happened? The rates never went down. It was never brought to the board, and it was never uh, an issue where someone said, hey, our legal fees went down, why don't we reduce rates? So we have all these things that the, the board was told at this time. Oh, if, the, if you guys have a surplus, or at some point you guys can rate, lower the rates anytime you want, it doesn't require a 218. But guess what will never happen? The rates will never go down. You know why? Because no one's going to bring it up. It isn't like there's any reason to, because you guys don't see that reason, except that the people who are paying the bills are suffering, just like everybody else, with inflation. It's not just this community or the CSD or your expenses are going up. 
everyone feels it. You go look at a bottle of Tide, and it's 40 bucks, and it was 15 a couple of months ago. Well, guess what? Our pocketbooks are hurting. We don't have a choice in whether or not we pay our water bill and sewer bill. We have to. We're obligated. We use water. Got to pay it. I guess I could choose not to wash my clothes and go to work sneaky and not buy Tide, but that's a pretty shitty choice. I don't want to make that choice. So instead, we're, everyone in the community is being forced into this position where they don't have a choice of what to pay. The board, again, is being told numerous times, well, you can lower the rates if you want to, but it'll never happen. I recall that. Uh, you are correct. You know, you, the board at any time could elect it to lower rates. But when, the one thing to go with your statement about, you know, tight, for instance, going up, well, the district is not immune to any sort of inflationary costs. So all the pipe that we buy has gone up 20, 30%. The fuel that we buy is the same fuel that you guys buy. The power we pay for is it at a higher rate than what a residential rate is, because we don't get a choice in that. We get to pay time of use, and we get to pay through the nose for it. But the difference for you guys, Kelly, is you guys do have a choice. You don't have to go with that pipe supply. In fact, you, you have the ability to buy from any company you wish. We don't have that. I have to, we have to pay the district for our water and sewer. But if you said, well, Coastal Pipe is charging us too much money, well, you have the opportunity to shop it and find it somewhere else for less. Or buy in bulk, buy more of it, get it at a lower per foot cost. You have options at hand to massively reduce what you spend. I understand you have limited staff, so you don't have this huge procurement department to do that. But I can say, since that's what I do for a living, that there are options and are ways for you to save money. Whereas the community doesn't have that same opportunity. Yeah, and I understand that. But my point is, is that we still we are still subject to cost increases. Sure. Sometimes, you know, above 100 percent, and even shopping around doesn't necessarily save us. Yes, Jim. It goes back to the 98 dollar nicking board. Okay. There's, there's, there's you know, Mr. Smiley. Huh? 75. Well, whatever. Uh, Mr. Smiley thinks it's funny that I mentioned cutting board stipends, but when you eliminate the stipends and you eliminate fuel use by employees and you do a number of things that you dig in and find, it adds up. It adds up, even if it's just a little bit. My second comment or question, because comment is over, um, you said that it would be up to the community to decide which way the board goes. There's only 12 of us in here out of 906. Are you going to be considering us, the community, or, or is there going to be another way of getting a sampling to the people that don't or can't show up to these meetings? So the purpose of this meeting was to allow public that could attend this meeting to give feedback to the board. If, say, all 12 of the people here said, hey, we really like Director Baker's con or proposal, we would like to look at that more, then that would give the board feedback in order to move forward with something different. If everybody in, the, in here said, you know what, we like the 218 one more, that, that benefits us more, then you know, they'll give them feedback. I think that one of the concerns that I'm hearing is we went through a 218 process five years ago and there was a laundry list of things that we were going to do with the money and we're being asked to do this again based on if, what, if, maybe, and might when a lot of the things that were slated to be done with the first 218 process money never got spent on those projects. Some of those projects are just, we're still accumulating money to be able to do them. But the majority of it wasn't done. For whatever reason, inflation, you call it whatever you want. It's a vicious cycle that's going to go on and go on and go on. The problem is, is now is a bad time to be asking. That's the biggest part of the problem. Yes. <laughs> you have 50%, maybe more, of the Hispanic community. Where's the translator to explain it to them? Where are they? Right here. I did it in Spanish, I did it in English, and then, yeah, I read Thank you for being here. Well, it would have been nice for the people to know that there was going to be somebody here that they could speak to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes, it does. My other question is, did you say that they might do another 218 process? If the board chooses to move forward with the yeah. acres proposal, then another 218 process would have to occur. And who would be counting those votes at the next 218 process if there is one? Well, the district would count just like the district has before. In, in the open meeting, in public, in front of everybody. Okay, and are there going to be regulations this time as to which ones are thrown out and which ones are valid? We follow the state law on what on Proposition 218 state law on what, what, what ballots are counted, what ballots are not counted by what they are. And refresh my memory, how many ballots did you get originally? So I don't remember the total, but apparently 538. And we needed how many? So you needed 453. And, and all the rest of those were thrown out because? For several reasons. One, either they didn't live in the district, they didn't have, uh, that person's name was not anywhere on the county public record or the district record for that address, or they were duplicates. Um, there's various reasons. I don't know off the top of my head how many of each one were. So you're saying if somebody was renting and their landlord's paying the water bill and they sent in one of those letters, it would have been counted because they're not on a, they don't have their name on the water bill or anything? If you were a renter and you did not have your name on the water bill and your owner, but the owner was paying the water bill and we could not prove that you lived there, then yes, that one would have been. So shouldn't there be something mentioning that on the, on the on the process, letting them know that they need to prove their so residence as well as their providing their APN or their address? It said you had to be the customer or the property. Yeah, I, 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 I think I recall that. So my three rounds. Which makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm the property owner, so my votes were valid, correct? Yes. How so, many of her votes were valid? More so than three. Her votes were all valid. She's the property owner, so all the properties that she voted against the rate increase for, she's the property owner, so those are all valid. Okay, were all those votes valid for the, um, the trailer park? <coughs> so the property owner of the trailer park voted against it, but the other properties, or the other trailers inside the park are not customers. But yet they're paying their water bill. Okay, they're paying the park. Sense. So she, she only got one vote then? Yes. Yes. So we talk about you know, I was just curious, how did the uh, notice of that go out? Do you give it to every water customer saying, hey, you need to vote on this? Or is that a local people have to send it to everyone? How does that work? So we send it to all of the, the account holders and property owners. Okay. In the water bill or separate? It goes to the uh, it goes separately. Separate. 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 Let's say it was on the water bill. I think most people would just check right there. No, I don't want to increase. It's pretty it's fair okay. and easy to find out. <coughs> so a question for the board. Uh, if it's the desire of the community to go with the director of Berkeley's rate plan, is it the intention of the board to, prior to another 218, prior to another 218, Establishing a cure period or a cure process by where any of these votes against the rate increase from the public can be validated. Because right now, you're only having it counted by staff. And they're making it a go or no go decision without any further information, without any opportunity for those people who, who in good faith, signed those documents that they did not wish it to have an increase, which is what they're protesting against the 218. So is it your intention to have a cure process and cure period prior to another 218? I think, yes, it should be a cure period. Because the only one that, that looked at those ballots and threw out 200 of them uh, was the general manager. And there was no question, there was no follow-up, you know. Like, cure period? So, yeah, it, it should be a cure period. I 100% agree. I know. I hope the rest of the board the should be done in public and that you should bring in an outside entity to count them. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, that was suggested and it wasn't done. Yeah, so I mean, we have and We've gone through this twice. We've gone through this twice now. They were counted behind closed doors the first time. 
So when? What do you mean? Don't shake your head at me. You weren't around. Okay, sir. Sir. Order, or you be removed from the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so don't sit there and shake. Your, and your don't sit there and shake your head and quickly. Don't sit there and show some show some decorum. For the people who weren't part of the, the last two eighteen or are curious, the process for counting ballots is we receive the ballots up into the close of the public hearing. So you can submit them any time from when you receive the notice up until the, the board meeting that we're closing that public hearing which is the end of an acceptance for protests. That at that meeting, all of the ballots are counted. So whether they're valid or not, they're all counted. They're all put together so that we know how many in total we have. After that, they're verified against districts of tenants or owners, and they're verified against county records of property owners. The county records and district records are protected information. So we can't have somebody that is not uh, a member of the district that actually has access to those records or is not a county representative having access to county records even looking at either one of those systems because that's a disclosure of private from protected information which is why a third party is not available or not able to do that. You're telling me that an APN number, an address, and a signature are confidential? I can download that. Together? I can download that right now from, from the county. Mm -hmm. So the county, right this minute. The county will, you can go on the county portal right now and you can look up an address and an APN number. You can't look up the person's name that's associated with that address. You can get the I can, I can pull the I can pull the voter registration down, and it gives me everything. If you go if you go through the, uh, the proper channels, you can get access to pretty much anything from the county. But you have to tell them why you're doing it, and you have to sign a document saying that you know why you're doing it. And that's what you're using. You can go down to the county and request a voter registration form. I got one right here, I'll show it to you. It's got all the information on there. Just pay them the fee and they'll give it to you. With regards to those that were thrown out, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember the discard pile that was thrown out. There were, there were some where it was a first initial or last name with the correct address and a signature. That was discarded. If it was, you know, the person's name was David Smith, they put D Smith, you threw it out. Yeah. I mean, you, it's, it's pretty obvious that that's who it is. And it has a, there's a signature beyond that. Why would that be discarded? Because how do we know, so we know that the owner may be David Smith, but how do we know it's not Dan Smith, or Danielle Smith, or yeah, some other random Smith that has nothing to do with it? Or maybe they just didn't know the person's first name and they just put D and Smith. Don't there's you a have signature. a signature to verify? No. Well, then, then why are you using signatures for verification? Why? Yeah. It's, 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 this it's a legal document, so they're signing saying that they are doing that, that they want to protest. Yeah. So again, yeah, I restate the need for a cure period and a cure process because D. Smith could then be engaged with their address, which is provided on the board, yeah. and say, we can't catch your form because you didn't write your full name. Can you please submit a form with your full name? Once the protests are accepted at the public hearing, they can't be changed. That's why there needs to be a cure period. And we provided time at the request of the board for people who wanted to ask about their particular ballots to ask. We but had like a total of maybe five. But it wasn't going to change the outcome. You weren't going to accept a new form. As you said, that period is closed. And there's no process because you only use the state guidelines. There's no San Miguel CSD guideline to give a cure period and a cure process. That's why I'm saying if you do it again, it's not fair for those people whose, whose votes didn't count against the 218 when they have no means to correct it, even though they were legitimate. Can I ask a question? Yes. So when you sent out the form that, let's say we're, we're going to do this and you're going to send me a form, can you put, I mean, could we put on there, you have to write your full and last name, you have to do this and this, very specific, so that you get the correct names? So we didn't provide a form. So okay. in, the, in the notice that went out, it basically said the, the basic things that the, pa the, the paper, any paper, would have to say on it in order to be a, a protest. 
So basically, okay. you had to say what your address or your gotcha. ATM was, what your full name was, uh, that you protest the rate increase, right. and your signature. That's it. It okay. could have been written on a napkin. It doesn't matter. The, uh, most of the protests that were received were collected by uh, Mr. Yes. Sankster, Director uh, Davis, in, a, in going around town and talking to people and asking whether they wanted the rate increase or not. So that's where most of them came from. Okay. We did not create that form. So, if we created it, if the district were to have a policy of some sort that varied from Proposition 218, then that might be part of what the, the board directs to be established as some sort of a protest. It doesn't vary from the 218, but the, as a uh, municipal service, you're able to provide your own process and cure period and cure process by which the protest forms are handled. It's not, it's, it's specifically stipulated by the state guidelines that there is no process. It's up to each agency to determine their own process. And the district does not determine the process. That's why I'm saying it's so critical. Well, and to be fair, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have a process. I'm just trying to explain this process. Or have any questions or comments? Sure. Uh, so the rate that was from the previous 218. Okay, so that went through the process, and there were a lot of protests, but unfortunately they didn't meet the level that was required. I personally didn't like that rate study or proposal, so I came up with, with my own. A little bit different. Um, one of the reasons that I didn't like the other one is that you had some people were going to get a 39% and a 28% and a 17% decrease, and then the people in the middle, which is the bulk of the people, were all at 15, 15, 16, 16, 16, 17, 17, 17, which is about 85% of the people were going to get anywhere from a 15 to a 13%. And then we went way down to the bottom of the deal, there are people that were going to get big decreases again. So I was trying to kind of spread it out so that a person that didn't use any water wasn't going to get a 39% increase. But they still got skin in the game because they still get, you know, the biggest expense is kind of manufact man not manufacturing the water, but keeping up the infrastructure. Because in my mind, water is a free product. Right. You're not, not manufacturing a lot of pumping and we're taking it out to you guys. So I came out with a deal where the first 12 units, which again is about 85% of, of the customers, people that use the zero to 12, are going to pay $2.80 a unit. And hopefully people can maybe use a little more water, and maybe out of the lawn and have more of a car to park the car they want. So that was, that was the intent of mine. And the other deal was, and to, to accomplish that, I had to raise up, you know, the flat rate. Um, because again, that's what's going to happen if we get in a drought situation and everyone's paying to cut back water. When you're depending on most of your revenue coming from the price per unit, and that falls, you're going to be in trouble. Because $32.30 is not going to as a flat rate, it's not going to cover all the expenses for this district. And it's, it is important to me, in my mind, that we do have a solid reserve and that we can respond if there is an emergency. I think last year, right with it, a little, last year looked like we were pretty lucky. It looked like we didn't have a lot of big maintenance expenses. And this year, so far, we've had the river road break in the line and some other stuff. You know, not so much. But the important thing, is that the community is one. I mean, I don't, I, I have my own well, okay? And if that water goes out, it's a big deal to me. And I gotta fix it myself. But I mean, you don't wanna be without water. You don't wanna be without water. And this district has to have the ability and the funds to keep the water. And um, I think that's important to maintain, you know, healthy reserve. And that's, that's part of the deal. Um, these rates overall, if you look at the bottom line, are really not generating that much more money than what we're currently right now. 
And in terms of, you know, for future increases, I would find that the consumer price index, it's not like an automatic five, but if it's two, it's two, if it's three, whatever it is. So, but that's just my opinion. So that, that, that was my intent of just looking at this thing, you know, a little bit differently, kind of spreading out uh, the way the increases are, are going to look. But, you know, there's, Inflation hits everybody. It hits us. It hits this district. I mean, we all we all get it. Um, but that was my intent. I'm, I'm, and you're not hurting my feelings if you don't like it. I think that's fine. It was just, it was just another idea, you know, to, to put out there. And then maybe you just want to keep the same. Rate. I don't know. Maybe you just like you like what it is. Maybe you just keep what it is and just see what you can get out on that and just put a Super price and X increase or something. I mean, I, you know, that, that may be another option. But the one that was uh, proposed, I mean, that that's good to go if the board wants to approve it. You know, so. I just want to just first off, I actually want to thank everyone for showing up and being here tonight. Regardless of your opinions on either one of the things, I do want to thank her for taking a little time to give us an alternative. Uh, my position right now is to listen to everyone's perspectives for and against, um, you know, for raw tomatoes at the board, uh, all that. Um, so that's why, that's why I haven't been saying much, I'll just listen as much as I can. Uh, my position is honestly, it has been hard on. Uh, many families in our community. I know that we are one of the last affordable places to live in this county, which is very unfortunate. And I want to make sure that people can continue to live uh, and be able to take care of their basic necessities in this community. So um, I also think that our community does uh, deserve to have clean water. Um, I know though that the arsenic thing was also part of our CRD if I'm not mistaken, but our reserves don't even come anywhere close to what the engineer has, has quoted for the uh, arsenic. So, so that's a problem in, in of itself. Um, so I just wanted to like, just listen as much as I can first before you know, going further into either one, but I really do like the idea of having a stable um, great system like the Dr. Baker proposed. Uh, having it so that we we're not, you know, penalizing pe people for, for using water, you know, because some people want to grow vegetables in you know, their yard or what have you. They can cook, cook dinner. I want to do those things. So, yeah, we just want to listen to what they can and go from there tonight. Cool. <coughs> yeah, I just, uh, this is basically public information. Uh, I don't know if you people are aware. But since 2016 up to 2019, my litigation for this Steinbeck lawsuit cost the district $850,000. And since 2016, 2016, and, or 2019, to basically the present, it's cost us another 